Seeing as the new consoles are about to be released, I thought it's a good idea to look at SSDs again. So today I'm going to look at all the information that's out there regarding SSDs and then come to a conclusion about what PC gamers should do. Now if you like this video, make sure to click on the like button and also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. One of the reasons that prompted me to make this video was Hardware Unboxed recent video covering SSDs which compared PCIe Gen 4, Gen 3, SATA SSDs and hard disk drives. I highly recommend watching the video for in-depth testing and analysis. But the video got me thinking about the PC versus console situation again, particularly when many gamers on PC, such as myself, still have much of their game library on a hard disk drive. In this recent Steam hardware survey, 51% of users have above of one terabyte of storage space, and while it doesn't say whether it's an SSD or hard disk drive, judging from the other answers in the survey, I believe most people are still gaming on hard disk drives. So if a majority of users on PC gamers are on hard disk drives, and next generation consoles with SSDs around the corner, what's going to happen? Hopefully I can answer that question today, but to do that we need to ask more specific questions. So number one, can next gen games be designed for both SSDs and hard disk drives? And number two, will Will SSDs change the way games are designed? First, let's take a quick look at the performance of SSDs right now. So here we see the PCIe Gen 4 SSDs leading the way, posting 5GB per second results, while Gen 3 SSDs vary between 3.5GB per second to 2GB per second, the lower score possibly due to the type of NAND or perhaps without a DRAM cache. The next batch of results are the SATA SSDs, and finally, the Western Digital 12TB hard disk drive is dead last. Note these are sequential read speeds. The random read performances are more interesting though, as they are a fair bit slower. And when there is only a Q depth of 1, thread count of 1, the results plummet where the PCIe Gen 4 SSD can only read at 60 megabytes per second. So what's going on? Well, the test uses very small file sizes of 4 kilobytes each, and reading and copying these one at a time leads to very slow read times. With a larger queue or more threads, this can be buffered and the performance is much greater. Even still, the point I do want to make is that in the worst case scenario, the hard disk drive is still around 30 times slower than the slowest SSD on the bar chart. And that's a big enough difference where developers would be considering whether they should be making SSDs the new baseline hardware. Despite this big difference, this doesn't translate to better performance right now in games. There's an improvement in loading times, but it's not the 30 times difference we saw. And that's because games were developed for hard disk drives and not SSDs. Microsoft's dev blog about direct storage writes, Previous gen games had an asset streaming budget in the order of 50 megabytes per second, which even at smaller 64 kilobyte sizes amounts to only hundreds of IO requests per second. The SSDs can do many more times this amount. So to explain simply, in last gen games the streaming budget was 50 megabytes per second and that was all developers needed to allow for because they couldn't get the data off the disk fast enough. If they made a game with a much larger streaming budget to cater for SSDs, the game wouldn't work on hard disk drives. The Sony PS5 hardware reveal really showed how they could leverage these improvements in the SSD, and I'll summarize this into three key points. Number one, a custom SSD controller and dedicated processors in the IO controller that takes processing load off CPU cores by managing a number of tasks like file check-in, file mapping into memory, and decompression of data. Mark Cerny, who gave the presentation, states that altogether it could take three or four Zen 2 cores to replicate all the work done by these dedicated processors. Number two, decompression of data can result in a file on disk to be 50% smaller. When the data is required, it gets decompressed and then sent to the GPU VRAM or system memory. Effectively, the bandwidth of the SSD increases from 5.5 gigabytes per second to 8 to 9 gigabytes per second because of decompression of data. Number three, Mark Cerny also touched on new ways games could be developed. Game design previously was very much dictated by how much they could load in data at any one time. We've all seen the narrow gaps that players have to squeeze past, or the forced elevator or train rides. But next generation games mean most of these will probably be eliminated. Looking further, the SSD could be so fast that the game could instantly load assets and textures to whatever was behind the player. This means that more detail could be spent on the screen at any one time, and this could also change gameplay in new ways. 
If you want more evidence of how an SSD will play a big part in next gen, look no further than the Unreal Engine 5 demo. Epic Games showed off two key features, Lumen and Nanite. It's Nanite that gives clues as to how next gen games will be developed. Nanite allows developers to use their models and assets as they were conceived and the engine would optimize it. In their words, I just want to bring in my ZBrush models, my photogrammetry scans, my CAD data without wasting any time optimizing, creating LODs or even lowering the quality to hit frame rates. In the demo, Nanite took a cave with billions of triangles of rock geometry and crunched it down to 20 million triangles. In another area, Epic boasted a statue with 33 million triangles that was replicated in the tomb 500 times for a total of 16 billion triangles. This would I'm assuming get reduced down to tens of millions of triangles, but this is what Epic is calling limitless geometry. Similarly, LODs or level of detail would determine an engine so developers wouldn't have to create different LODs and worry about performance as much. The engine would create the detail to suit the game as required. This significant uplift in detail really means this can only be sustained by faster storage and dedicated I.O. processors that can get data in and out of system memory as fast as possible and reducing the amount of idle data in system memory which used up significant amounts of RAM in last gen games. Sony isn't the only one developing faster transfer speeds. Microsoft as part of their Xbox Velocity architecture also have a number of technological advancements. In hardware, Microsoft also have a dedicated decompressor to increase the amount of data that gets to memory. Microsoft have stated it could do 2.4 gigabytes per second of raw data, which could be 4.8 gigabytes per second uncompressed. In terms of API, Microsoft have a direct storage API, which allows developers to have low level access to how the data gets handled from the SSD to system memory. In the Microsoft blog, it states, it provides developers with fine-grained control of their I.O. operations, empowering them to establish multiple I.O. queues, prioritization, and minimizing I.O. latency. The good news for PC gamers is that this direct storage API has already been announced to be coming to the PC. NVIDIA have their own idea about how PCs should suddenly handle this massive amount of data transfer. Rather than sending it through the CPUs and bottlenecking them, because, you know, NVIDIA doesn't make CPUs. NVIDIA developed RTX I.O., which allows the GPU to call data, decompress it with GPU cores, and store it direct into VRAM and bypass the CPUs. NVIDIA tells that this could save many CPU cores worth of processing. This could very well mean AMD could do something similar and use their GPUs as a means to decompress the data too. I hope that's enough information that consoles are going to push forward with developing games on SSDs and going to leave hard disk drives behind next generation. There's too many benefits from a developer standpoint to not utilize, from having significantly more detail in their game worlds, to being able to change gameplay because assets can be brought in instantly. So what does this all mean for PC gamers? Let's answer the two questions I had at the start of the video. Number one, can next gen games be developed for both SSDs and hard disk drives? I'm going with no here. There's really no way to design a game with such a large difference between hardware. Developers are going to have to pick one and I think they'll lean towards SSDs pretty quickly. Number two, will SSDs change the way games are designed? Yes, more data on the screen, more gameplay options, better performance all round. The only thing left to answer is the few hurdles left for PC gamers to jump through before enjoying the benefits of SSD gaming. Number one, the PS5 and Xbox have hardware advantages such as decompression in the I.O. complexes that allow for high data transfer rates. NVIDIA RTX I.O. could be the solution here, or even as a last resort, CPU cores that could decompress some of the data would help. Software-wise, Microsoft Direct Storage should mimic what's done on the Xbox. Number two, Gen 4 SSDs that does seven gigabytes per second available at reasonable prices would obviously bring faster adoption of SSDs. Ultimately, I see developers settling for a baseline around Xbox's 4.8 gigabytes per second of compressed data transfer rates. 
what will realistically happen is that games will soon demand at least a SATA SSD. This minimum would then move to a PCIe Gen 3 SSD soon after before Gen 4 being required. We're already seeing minimum spec requirements for games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla ask for an SSD, even though the game is playable on last gen hardware. No doubt this is preparing gamers for future Ubisoft games and getting as many gamers to upgrade as soon as possible. Alright that's it for this one, make sure to click on the like button if you liked the video and also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this and I'll see you in the next one.